Hey there, it's Wednesday afternoon, about noonish, so that means it's time for Teach Your Business to Fish. I'm Michael Rager, your business guide, and we're here to talk you through business and what's going on and help you guide your business to make it more money and profits. That's what it's all about. You know, I think you're going to like it today. I got my friend Andy Erickson on. Andy's sitting over here to the side. He's gonna. You can kind of see him in his reflection in the mirror behind me. He's back there. You can wave into the reflection, Andy. Go ahead. There there we go. We got him on there. So uh, we're, we're going to get that going, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about perception, because uh, those of you guys who have, uh, that are following me on Facebook and doing stuff, Andy's a business broker, and business brokers are very important when uh, we get ready to sell a business or we want to buy a business. We need someone that can guide us uh, through that process, You know, just like we help guide you to grow the business and stuff like that. But we want to talk about perception today, because perception is... Man, it's reality to some people. It, it really is, is. Is People really believe what they perceive, whether it's real or not. A couple of years ago, I was doing uh, some training for some Nigerian engineers. I loved it. They came over. We were doing, uh, we were doing leadership training and organizational you know, leadership training and helping them become better at what they do. And we, we got in this discussion about perception. And, and one of the guys was like, no, no, no. But but if it's wrong, what if, what if their perception's wrong? And I'm like, yeah, that's important, but the funny thing is, it's their reality, and it's right to them, and that's the thing that we need to look at, because especially we start talking about this a little bit later with business, we need to understand that how people are looking at things that they perceive, you know, we're seeing it right now in our election, you know, some the right perceives it this way, the left perceives it this way, we all know that this and this are BS, what's really going on is somewhere here, and, and, and we need to figure it out, and one of the best analogies and ways to teach it that uh, that that I learned was a friend of mine, Scott Fay. Uh, Scott Fay, when I joined the John Maxwell team, was uh, the guy that introduced Paul Martinelli to John Maxwell and and helped get the thing going. And what Scott did was he brought in a beach ball and he set the beach ball, blew it up, set the beach ball down on the on the table, and he went to you know said people sit around. He said, okay, what color is it? And two people would look at it and go, it's white and yellow. Two people would look at it and go, it's white and red. It was white and green and white and blue. Were, were any of them wrong? And the answer is no. They weren't wrong, but they didn't have the perception that everybody else did. So we got to take this into consideration when we're doing what we're doing. You know, our customers sometimes don't perceive the value of what we bring. There was a guy the other day on Facebook, he, he, he put this... Very interesting ad, and he said, hey, I do this, this, and this in home improvement. I think he did painting and drywall and stuff like this. And he goes, call me now, and you're going to get 15% off everything. And so I just responded to him on Facebook, and I said, why are you giving 15% off? Why are you giving away? I don't know your profit margins, but why are you giving away 20 to 30% of your profit, minimally? And, and he's like, well, everybody on TV does it. <laughs> and I'm like, well... Is that right? But his perception was the only way for him to get clients was to give a discount. The only, his perception was the only way for him to give clients was to give a discount. It wasn't to go ahead and actually add value. And that's what it's all about in business. We need to go ahead and add value. We see, we see perception all over the place. And a lot of times, it's, the, the, the things are not about us. What goes on in the world is not about us, it's about others. We really, as business owners, in order for us to be successful in what we do and how we market our products and services, is look at everything. I'm looking at that camera right now. You've got to understand how everybody from that camera is looking at me and understanding how they perceive me and the value that I add. When I come out and I say business guide, I do that intentionally, and I was at a networking event last week, and this guy said, business guy, ha, 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 chuckled, and I said, but, you know, when you're going fishing in a new area, who do you hire? You hire a guide. You hire a guide, somebody who knows about what you're doing and what needs to be done. I mean, I've been coaching for 13 years. You know, I've been coaching for a while. I, I kind of know a thing or two, but I ended up in Texas because me and a partner, he started a company. I was a key employee. We, we put together an ESOP and we sold it to an engineering firm. Okay, the thing he sold was me and my Rolodex in 2000. I had connections. I had people in the oil and gas industry and he sold my connections to somebody else. They perceived the value of Mike. The other perception was is we didn't need Keith. We're going to give you money to go away. We're going to bring in Mike to go ahead and help us make more money. 
and we were until Enron hit and all that bad stuff. And that it, it just turned out to be really, really crappy timing. We sold at the right time. You know, we, we did the right things and that's what we need to look at. So there's a lot of things that are going on right now in the world that we've got to understand how people perceive what's going on. And that's a lot of what Andy and I are going to talk about. We're going to talk about how people perceive their business. You know, as a business broker, people are going to come to him with unrealistic expectations of what their business is worth. You know, I was sitting here and I, I just saw that uh, a, a thing slipped by on my, my LinkedIn. I got a friend of mine, Alex Howard, who I, I can't wait to get Alex on here. Alex used to own a business valuation firm. It was a big valuation firm. And and we were talking about this one day. I think it was when the Dodgers sold for a billion dollars. And he's like, yes, yeah, their perception was it was worth a billion dollars. The rest of us may look at it and say, no way in heck is it worth that. But somebody thought it was, and they were able to get that. But when we get to reality here, and we're going to be looking at this, and our job is not to crush everybody's bubble, and it's, it's not to pop it, but we've got to get those people that perceive, and that's what Andy's going to talk about, my business is worth this. we got to get them to look at kind of some of the realities and the numbers that are around there, because the people that are going to be looking to buy that business are not going to perceive it as this. They're going to perceive it as this. And, and this is the thing that we need to do. And that's why he and I work together to try to make the businesses bigger. If we can go ahead, we, know, we, we talk about putting lipstick on a pig. That's not necessarily what we want to do with businesses to make them look better. But we can go ahead and make them better by doing a few things. And, you know, I think a, a couple of weeks ago when I did the show on the uh, the – the, the, the six cylinders of business that my, my buddy Frank Mamulo put together. If we can work and just, just fine tune each one of those cylinders just a little bit better, it, it, it actually will move the perceived value up for that buyer. So those are the things that we want to talk about today. We're going to get into that. We're going to look at perception. Tina, hey, thanks for uh, saying hi. I see you on there. But um, let's get out there. Uh, we're ready to go to uh, commercial right now, Jonathan. Or, yeah, okay, we got the thumbs up. So we're going to go, we're going to come back, we're going to have Andy, we're going to talk about uh, perception and business and what's going on in the business brokerage world. This is Michael Rager, your business guy, teach your business to fish. We'll be back in a minute. Hi, this is Alberto Tudela. The Houston metro area has experienced a substantial increase of wind and hail damage, flooding, and other perils in the last five years. Now more than ever, it is critical and essential to ensure your company, your property, as well as your family have the right insurance coverage. Tudela Insurance Solutions offers a wide variety of insurance for home, auto, property, as well as life insurance. My goal is to find a tailored option that guarantees the right coverage at the right price. Specific to your needs, present and future, so you protect what matters the most. Call me today at 713-714-4475 and allow our team at Tudela Insurance Solutions to make sure you're protected. Accidents never happen when we expect them. Now is the time to ensure you have peace of mind. This pandemic has decimated the economy, especially small business. Restaurants are closing, retailers are calling it quits, owners, managers, and sales reps wonder, is this the new normal? They are worried about their companies and their future. Bounce Back West Chase is here to help. Multiple companies, as well as public officials, have teamed up to reinvigorate Houston businesses with Bounce Back West Chase, which can be found at bouncebackwestchase.com. Bounce Back West Chase is a completely free of charge platform where any company in Houston can boost, get exposure, and bring new customers to their business. There are three easy steps to helping you get new customers. One, log on to bouncebackwestchase.com and click sign up to get new customers. Two, fill out your company details. Three, create a bounce back offer or discount. Your information will then be sent out to thousands of potential customers and clients on a weekly basis. Bounce Back West Chase is a completely free local initiative for Minuteman Press West Chase, City Council members Tiffany D. Thomas and Greg Travis, State Congressman Jim Murphy and Gene Wu, Now Media Radio, the Houston West Chamber of Commerce, and the West Chase District. Get your company signed up, get new customers, and let's bounce back together. COVID-19 
seen transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. All right, welcome back. This is Michael Ridge, your business guide here on Teach Your Business to Fish. I got Andy Erickson. Andy, how are you doing today? Pretty good, Michael. I'm, uh, you know, beautiful day outside and just enjoying life. I know this is two weeks in a row. It hasn't been raining on Wednesday, so I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah. There's, uh, you know, we, we went through about six weeks in a row that it just decided it would rain every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it just made it more fun to be in here because we couldn't think about fishing, right? You know, and that's that's the thing that we get. So, so tell us a little bit about First Choice, man. Exactly, what do you guys do for businesses? So, First Choice Business Brokers is a franchise organization that helps business businesses buy and sell. So, we work with companies that want to sell their business, and we also work with E two visas, people wanting to come into the United States, uh, you know, to buy these businesses. So, that's really what what our focus. Is. What's your focus? Are you more on helping buyers or sellers, or uh, does it really matter? It really doesn't matter, but our real business model is helping sellers, and you know buyers pretty much come to the table when we have have a list in. All right, all right. So how do how do people you know that are looking when did when should they start considering talking to somebody like you? If I own a business and I'm looking to sell, how how, how far in advance should I look to? To talk to you. To, to have the real conversation, five years plus. Yeah. You know, really when you when you open up your business, you should have the end result in mind. And so as soon as you can think about it, you know, talk to the right people. Yeah, it's just when I go in and I coach businesses, uh, I have all my clients, I hate giving plugs for other people, but I have them read uh, John Warlow's Built to Sell. Um, you know, build a thing right now off just from the beginning as a sellable asset. And um, I'm at, I was out one night with a guy and he owns a you know fifty million dollar construction company, a big construction mm -hmm. company. I'm never gonna sell it. And I go, dude, I don't care. But is it sellable? Right. Right. Is it sellable? So when when you see that and you hear it, what what's the one thing or like give me the two or three things that make businesses unsellable? You know, things that okay, that's a that's a really good uh, question. And you know, in the twenty first century, I think one of the biggest sticklers for buyers is bad Google reviews or no Google reviews. I would say that that's one of the biggest decision making factors for a buyer these days. The other one is when the seller has put all of their personal, you know, expenses through the business so that they lose money on their taxes. That that's a really difficult one for buyers to get over because even if we can help them understand where those dollars are, they they still don't want to believe it. Yeah, are you are you dealing a lot more with uh, B two C type businesses? Is that what you specialize in, or you do more of? You know, I would say that we're we do a lot of B two C businesses, but it's not the majority of our business. Oh, okay. I would say it's about 50-50, B two B B two C. Okay, yeah, because I know I see that when I'm talking to my clients that uh, that. Man, Google and and all these all these platforms are becoming very very important right now. And we're talking to the the, the beginning was perception, and 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 that's that's it. And understanding people get their perception by going to Google and reading what other people think about you, mm -hmm. and they make an opinion based on that. And you know, Google reviews and all these reviews used to be so much more focused on the B two C and B two B owners. Don't believe that that has an impact on people making a decision to work with them, and it really does these days. Yeah, it it, it really does. So when you're a buyer, when I'm coming in and I'm a buyer and I'm I'm coming, Andy, I want to buy a company. Mm -hmm. what, what's the what's the first thing that I need to be bringing to you? What what do you need to know about me? Mm -hmm. So you can really help me find what's the best thing for me. You know, really what I want to know is, um, you know, personally what you want to achieve. And what, whether that's, you know, five, ten years down the road, what, what's the income that you need to make on a yearly basis? What kind, you know, industry really isn't important. We, a lot of the times we find when a buyer comes, they say, well, I want this and only this. <clears throat> and we'll bring them an opportunity that they had even had no idea that that was a business model that was achievable. Mm -hmm. And so really it's about personal goals and finding the business business that will help them achieve their personal goal. How many how many people come to you prepared? Um, I would say, you know, as far as private equity companies go, it's okay. 85%, mm. but when it's individual buyers, I would say almost none. 
None. None. So they're not. They're not. So if you're looking to go out there and buy a business, there's some homework that you should be doing. Yes. Where should? Where do they find that stuff? Where? Do, I mean, is that really? Do they? They go look for first choice and and, and, and reach out to you before then? You know, they can. Uh, we have a lot of great content on our website that, that we discuss. But really, uh, websites like Biz Buy Sell, Deal Stream, mm. BusinessBroker.net, they create a lot of content that help buyers and sellers understand what the market is, what do they need to be prepared for, and what they need to do to be prepared. Hmm. You know, it's just really looking at things, you know, from, like you said, perception from the buyer's perception, the seller's perception. Mm-hmm. What's the one thing uh, sellers... Th- I, I know I know that sellers always think their business is worth way more than what it is. Yes. Isn't it? I, I, w- I would say 95% of the time. <laughs> you, you have a few unicorn <clears throat> clients that, you know, think that their business is actually worth what it is. But uh-huh. It's few and far between. How much time do you spend with them, you know, looking at the business and this is what it's really worth? Because I know one of the things they can get from you. Is a, I think it's a, a free, free evaluation. Free, free evaluation. You're not doing a full valuation, full valuation no. but you're getting it. You're giving them a, a, a valuation of the business. I know when the the business or profit accelerator software that I use, we do a rough valuation of the company, yes. um, so we can show them if we start doing this, this will make it better. But how do how do you walk them through that and show them really, you know, what their potential business is worth? You know, what the the biggest issue that we find is the gross revenue that businesses you know actually have on an annual basis that's what the business owners think that their business is worth mm-hmm. and what we don't have what they don't look at is how much are our expenses <clears throat> what are our profit margins you know because people and then we, most people don't understand what the multiples are of what their business is actually worth so many people have have this idea in their mind that you know it's a seven or eight multiple no you know typically we're seeing especially in 2020 we're seeing it about a 2.3 multiple across all industries across the industry i know when uh when we were looking to buy the software company a few years ago you know our our goal was to buy it make it better and flip it mm-hmm. you know that was that was the whole goal in you know, we were looking at a 10x multiple because it was in technology. Right. That, that, that was the only reason, you know, we, we were already, before we even bought the company, we were already talking to IBM. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we were already selling up who our potential buyers were Exactly. at, at, at the end. So when, when people come to you, do you help them with that? Do you sit down and say, okay, yeah, you want to you wanna sell this thing in five, six, seven years? Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you educate them through and looking at that, or is that something that you sub out and you know some other stuff typically i will have the conversation with them to inform them so that they really understand the process but that's when i bring somebody to you that can help them implement that strategy Uh, you know when i talk to somebody they need to reverse engineer where they want to be in 10 years Mm -hmm. and i'm not going to be the one that helps them get there that's that's your job yeah well that's what we do uh and uh you know those are the things that we like to do (laughs) well because it's really funny is you know depending on the on the company um we we see a lot of people there. They're, the first thing they want to do is uh, market, market, market. Mm-hmm. We, we we need a market, and most businesses don't realize that that's not where they're going to make the, the the increase in profit margin. Exactly. Where is it? You know, that's where we have to look at. You know, what are what are we spending our money on, and where's the ROI? Because if we're spending money, there has to be a return on investment. Mm-hmm. And if we're just spending money to spend money, that creates a real big issue down the road. Yeah, it's 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 nine times out of ten, especially the business that establishes operations. Yeah. it's it's looking at fixed costs and direct costs. And uh, I was taught this. Uh, if you, it was called the five 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 principle. Uh, and again, I'll give Frank uh, uh, some. Uh, some kudos for that. Is I'm gonna I'm gonna start going, Frank. I'm gonna quit doing that. I was I learned by John Maxwell once that he goes, look, if if if, if you want to quote somebody, say, hey, you know, I heard John say, mm-hmm. and then the, the next time, you know, I heard someone say, <laughs> and then about ten times they say, you know, I was thinking uh, <laughs> after the third time, it's yours. <laughs> yeah, it's mine. It's mine, Frank. So I'm stealing it. R and D, as Cameron Harold told me, rip off and deploy. Uh, <laughs> five five five. So he said, if you reduce. Reduce fixed costs five percent. Mm-hmm. Reduce variable costs five percent. Increase revenue five percent is a thirty six percent change in profit margin. Yeah, it's it's huge. And you know, getting people to understand those numbers, you know, that's that's really important. Like the guy that I talked about earlier that was going to give a discount straight off the bat before he even knew what the heck he was doing because he thought that was the best way to get clients. Right. And you know that's 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 not it. You know what are what are some other mistakes that, that you see people that that are coming in with you that they really just have to fix right off the bat before they even think of selling these things. 
<laughs> that's that's a loaded question. <laughs> it is. We got we got like uh, twenty seven minutes still to fill. Okay. Uh, so you know, I think one of the biggest issues <clears throat> or the the biggest things that I see when somebody comes to me that they want to sell is we have somebody that I would call a sole proprietor. The, not not in the legal sense, but the operation is fo- is only about them. They have not been able to delegate. They have not brought anybody else on to take on those roles because that really dings a price of a business when it's going to sell because a buyer is now worried about, can I do this? <laughs> yep. No, oh, it's funny. Is that the, the company that we were forming, um, it was all on operational intelligence, mm-hmm. how the company functioned, why it, why right. it functions. I've got a um, client uh, up in um, fl- up in uh, Spring Area right now. We uh, we do some stuff with uh, and helping them doing it right now. It's a company called Flyboys. You know, uh, the the couple that owns it. He used to be an F sixteen fighter pilot. Mm-hmm. He um, developed some technology to make you know their 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 flight plans and flight stuff easier. And you know, he's owned the company for several years, and he's he's kind of positioning it just to sell it in the next few years. And we've been working with him to write operations manuals. Yeah. And it's, it's, we're, we're doing it electronically. We're using some software, and I'm not going to give the software a plug yet. If you want to do that, go to Michael Rager at teacherbusinesstofish.com, and I'll go send you the link to the software so I get paid if you buy it. Uh, <laughs> I get all, multiple streams of income. Um, <clears throat> but we're going through in this software, we, you know, we're shooting video, we're shooting everything, so everybody knows what people are supposed to, to be doing in the, right. in, the, in the company. So we, we, we gotta wrap this segment up in two minutes. So let, let, let's do, give me one other thing besides that, that, that we can, we can kind of go to this, this commercial with and then set up and come back to this. What's the next thing besides uh, getting everything out of the owner's head? You know, I think it's understanding who your customers are and what they value. <laughs> They don't even know who their customer is. Right. But that goes back to the teacher business to fish uh, hot dogs, uh, fishing with hot dogs. Um, I don't know if you've seen that. You see that video yet? Yes, I have. Yeah, it's 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 just, man. It's that fishing with hot dogs thing. It's it's just classic. These these businesses are doing it, and I catch myself doing it on occasion. You know, it's we get into the point where we're going, oh my god, I need revenue. I need revenue. I need revenue. Let me just get anybody. Right. And what we find is that anybody just kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to work with them and, and, and stuff like that. So it's really understanding who your client is. You know, so if you've been watching this uh, or listening to this podcast for you know the, the, the couple months we've been doing it, that's what we've been telling you. Know your fish. You need to know your fish to get rich. That's what it's all about. You know, We, we went out the other day, and we'll, we'll come and tell you our, uh, our Mahi Mahi story after the break. <laughs> and <laughs> you, ready to, you ready to hit it out, Jonathan? We're good? All right, you guys. This is Mike Rager, your business guide with Andy Erickson of First Choice Business Brokers. We'll be back in just a minute. Graphic design, banners, brochures, business cards, posters, any printing you need for your company's branding, Priority Printing SS is your solution. With more than 30 years of experience, Priority Printing SS has been the preferred solution for hundreds of companies for any printed materials. At Priority Printing SS, they believe in listening to you, bringing you creative ideas to effective results. Your printed materials talk about your company. Make sure they open the door for you. Trust your printed materials to the experts. Call Priority Printing SS at 713-575-9800 and let Priority Printing SS handle with ease all your printing needs. Hi, I'm Mike Mogell, the CEO of Clean Sweep Office Cleaning. A clean and disinfected space is essential to keeping your customers and your staff healthy, safe, and productive while preventing the spread of COVID-19. Clean Sweep Office Cleaning, with more than 20 years experience in janitorial, restaurant, post-construction, and floor maintenance cleaning. We really make it shine. We are focused on quality cleaning and wellness in our customer spaces. Our team is professionally trained to ensure not a spot is missed 
and we use products that are safe for your property and your people. Our services are tailored to your individual needs and include expert floor care, dusting, sweeping, mopping, vacuuming, detailing, glass cleaning, and deep disinfecting. Our experienced team is here to make your office as comfortable and clean as possible. Visit our website at cleansweeteofficecleaning.com or call us today at 832-689-7996. Now that's a clean sweep. transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. It's your business guide, Michael Rager, and we're back with Teach Your Business to Fish and Andy Erickson. Andy, all right, so before the break, we talked about two of the most important things that people need to consider before they sell their business. Number one, all this crap cannot be in their head. Yes. They need to get it out and make sure it's transferable. Documented, like you said. Document the crap out of what you do, because when you leave the company, you don't want to stay there. No. That's why you're selling I'm selling the company not so I can stay there for three more years and watch you screw up everything I built. Exactly. Um, I'm leaving the. I'm doing it so I can go sit on the beach and drink cock, fruity cocktails with umbrellas <laughs> in them and go fishing when I want. Right. <laughs> That's why I'm selling my business. Number two is understand who your client is. Yes. And how what do they pe- value? How do people? How do they screw that up? You know, I, I think it's because we're so, like fishing with hot dogs. We just cast a wide net and anybody that comes in, we believe that they're our client. Mm-hmm. But we don't understand what our major base, you know, that 80-20 rule. Where does 80% of your revenue come from? Because mm-hmm. you can create the psychodemographics around that and really learn. Not only does it make you more profitable, but it makes the ROI on your marketing in the future better. Mm-hmm. And then you can disqualify clients before even working with them. Yeah, one of the, one of the things I do, here, here you go, guys, I'll give you a little coaching tip. Uh, one of the things I do with my clients is go through and write down your last 100 clients. Tell me what they have in common. Mm-hmm. Then go identify what, which ones did you like working with. Find out what they had in common. And you're going to find out that there's something, there's, there's that 80-20 rule. Yeah. Most of them are going to be like this. They're going to be men. They're going to be women. They're going to be this age. They're going to be from this socioeconomic background. They're mm-hmm. being this this is it. There is, it's all going to be there. Exactly. And I, you know, I like people or businesses when they really focus on creating what we call an avatar, right? Mm-hmm. You know, really understanding what that is and visualize it so that the entire team can understand what that is so that we're all working towards the same goal. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it, it's, it's, it's hard. And I hear all that. Well, I got multiple people. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. You do. But who's the key? Right. Who, who's the key? There was a time uh, early in my career that over almost eighty percent of the the businesses I coached were women. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why. I don't know how it happened, but but it was. I, I had mostly women clients. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked working with them. They all cost way more than I did, which is really tough because he's been on the boat with me. <laughs> and <laughs> he's heard that. Um, but they, 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 it just, it just was. Yeah. And I liked working with them. It was fun. They worked. A lot of them worked harder than than the guys. I, I you know, I think a lot of it is they just want to really prove themselves. Mm-hmm. They're, they're like, hey, look, I'm going to prove people that this is what it is. This is what we're going to do, and I'm going to, I'm going to make this business successful. And it was fun, and I liked it. It's, it's, it's changed a little bit now. Uh, like, like myself, most of my my clients are. You know, business to consumer businesses. They've been doing. You know, the the really good ones that I'm coaching are doing. You know, a uh, million dollars plus in revenue, and you know, they they they, they kind of have a direction on what they're what they're doing. Yeah. When you're looking at your avatar, how do you how do you describe it? You know, we have multiple avatars, mm-hmm. and so I've, I've broken it down in, into three different segments. I have the buyer avatar. Somebody that is motivated to make a decision in the first 90 
to 120 days to buy a business. Mm -hmm. Because if they're just tire kickers, we don't want to work with them. Mm -hmm. Are they going to provide us the documents that we need so that we can disclose them on what the business is? You know, Mm -hmm. proof of funds is a huge thing. And then, you know, we can get even, you know, deeper down into what that avatar is, but that's a very general avatar. For the seller, we have two different avatars. One that we focus on, which is the B2C businesses under $500,000. Typically, it's a mom and pop or a franchise location that is operating the business on a daily basis. And they're not as business savvy. They don't understand the legal uh, legal documents, the legalese that we have in there. And so I have to walk them through that. Mm -hmm. And then I have the professionally managed, which are businesses that are typically generating over 200 million, or I mean 2 million in revenue annually. Mm -hmm. And so those people understand the documents that we're providing. And there's a lot less handholding that goes on in there. Mm -hmm. And so it's the emotions that I really focus on with those different avatars to make sure that we're in alignment. Yeah. I I usually find in mind, I've got that startup, you know, Mm -hmm. that startup there is zero to a quarter million dollars in revenue. And I like working with them. You know, I I, I had a germ wrap this year. I mean, they they were at, I I coached him yesterday and I said, you know, Manuel, I took you from zero to 30 some thousand dollars a month. And he said, no, 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 we had $150 that first month (laughs) you started. So we we went from uh, $150 to, I think, $33,000 a month. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice increase during COVID. The hockey stick. Yeah, it was, it was, it's very (laughs) hockey stick ish. And, uh, but, you know, going from that, and I like them, you know, they, they, they're there, they've got a, a totally different, um, persona you know they're they're, they're terrified how am i gonna how am i gonna make my, my my mortgage payment how am i gonna do this and how am i gonna pay you mm-hmm. you know that's always something then i get to the guy that's at that that one to that, that five hundred thousand to three million mm-hmm. you know then you get that three million to ten million and, and, and above that ten million you know they're going out to the big cpa firms and they're they're, they're going to other places exactly and i don't know I'm still I still bring in good information, but you know, hey, that's just my ego, <laughs> you know, going there. So, so what's what's going to be what's the most important thing going into you know Q4 for first choice business brokers? What what are you guys focusing on? Because I know you brought in a couple. You know, you got that mm-hmm. uh, the, the 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 marina, right? The marina, the marina. Yes, we have you know? a marina. So, uh, <laughs> anybody looking to buy a marina? Call Andy. <laughs> call me. We're ready. <laughs> so, but what's what's on your agenda? What what do you guys as a company need to focus on going into Q four? So, um, you know, that's a really good question. We we have an eighteen month rolling plan, and we we address that every quarter. And actually, uh, to be transparent, we address it every month. Mm-hmm. Um, so now we are planning for twenty twenty one. What that looks like. How many agents do we want to have in the office in January and how many do we want to have in December 31st? Mm-hmm. And so we are reverse engineering the you know the financial goals that we have and what do we do, need to do to achieve those? Mm-hmm. So we are <clears throat> budgeting marketing as of right now mm-hmm. for the first three quarters of 2021. And obviously we address that on a monthly basis to see what's working and what's not. Yeah, so so it's you're doing a lot of what I'm doing. You know, you're growing the agency. Yes. You know, it's I love working with clients. I love fishing more. Uh, so I'm looking to, you know, I'm looking to bring in a coaches. I'm looking to bring in six, seven, eight, nine, ten coaches in my team in the next year. Mm-hmm. And I, I imagine that's that's the exact same thing you're trying to do. Just double that. Yeah, you get twenty. Yeah, the, okay. goal, the goal is twenty five. Okay, okay, I, I like it. I see. I can do more, but then my fee that I have to pay out of the guy mm-hmm. goes up a lot. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, if I get ten. That's a hundred grand. That's ten grand a month with me doing nothing. Yeah, I could do that and then keep my coaching clients. As you know, that I got a half a million dollar business pretty easily. Exactly. So then, when I get ready to flip it, you know, I can go ask one for it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Somebody might buy it. You never. Know. Somebody might if they give me seven fifty. Uh, my, my goal is to build it to it so it's five million. Okay. Uh, that's that's my goal because then I figure if I got five million in the bank, I can go do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, say that mouth fat. Um, I'm, I'm just like, screw it. I'm going to go do what I want. And yeah. uh, I'm going to go hang out and I'm going to live in Costa Rica and I'm going to go sail fishing and I'm going to go paddle my kayak around and drink f- fruity drinks with, um, with umbrellas. Know, with umbrellas and Why not? Exactly. That's what we all want to do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I might pick Mexico, but you know, Costa Rica is even better. You know, I like both of them. I made uh, one of the biggest mistakes I think I made in, in my life. I was, God, man, it was like 98, 97, 98. Me and my friend Charlie Bertram, uh, we worked on a big project for 
uh, Florida Gas, and mm-hmm. we got done, and you know, God, we were you know twelve years, you know, we thirty, mm-hmm. and you know, got one hundred and fifty grand in my bank account. Yeah, nothing going on. He and I go to Cabo for a week fishing, <laughs> and you know, we were. I loved Cabo at the time because we were there over the weekend. We got there like Wednesday to Tuesday, and we fished like three days, you know, so we were fishing like every other day, just Mm -hmm. hanging out. And I didn't know on the weekends that school teachers from San Diego flew down for party on the weekend. And uh, I'm like single, and I got six figures in my pocket, and I was kind of having a good time. And (laughs) we actually went to, we actually went to Cabo Wabo. And Sammy Hagar was actually playing there on a Monday night. Oh wow! And Slash from Guns N' Roses was playing. Was the headline? Was actually playing. There was like thirty of us. And so Sammy comes out. You know, we had no cell phones, none of this right. stuff. And he just brings out this all-star cast of people playing with them. We're just sitting there drinking Coronas like they're going out of style. <laughs> but like we're like, we, me and Charlie, when we're getting ready to leave, we're like, huh? You got a hundred grand. I got a hundred grand. Yeah. What are we going home for? We're pretty sure we could find something to do here. Mm-hmm. And the way Cabo has grown right now on the fishing, and we could have done something really badass. Right. Focused. And if, it, we, right. We, yeah, if we just didn't drink ourselves to death, but that was a good, there was a high probability of that happening. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we were busy. We were, I, I wasn't as busy, sa- business savvy as I was now. Okay. So, so going to going to Mexico. Where do you want to go in Mexico? Where's your favorite place? Mazatlan. So I actually traveled to Mazatlan. I lived there for six months. Did you? I actually moved down there to learn how to offshore fish. I okay. wanted to learn the ropes for mm-hmm. marlin fishing. That mm-hmm. was the only purpose that we did. We went fishing twice a week for six months, and I learned a lot. Man, I when I went down there, we took a we took a group. I used to work for a company called Anglers and Hunters Travel, mm-hmm. and we did a a trip to go down to Mazatlan, and it was incredible. But the only thing that got me there, man, there's there's a little bit more gang activity, and uh, it wasn't as quite as friendly as once you got outside of the friendly confines of Mazatlan. Exactly. <clears throat> you know, you stayed in one area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we had man. The captain, I wanted to kill him, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he told this story when I was on the boat the other day. Uh, but we're, we're sitting there and um, we're trolling the first day, and we got the the, the teaser out. So those of you guys who want to start looking at marketing, and we talk about it all the time. You know, it's 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 that thing that's going to get the attention. We want to get your attention really quick. The teaser's there. It's a big thing, making all splash. This this marlin. Also, you see this this pool cue come out of the water, and this marlin is like five feet behind the boat trying to eat this yeah. freaking thing pull it away it turns back there's two lures back down there pounces on it and foo, 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 skyrocketing away things huge and we, we get up there it's bent like this and you see the lure go flying out of his mouth mm-hmm. like, crap all right fine bring back up boom, 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 boom. 15 minutes later we got another one on wow so we we, we get 15 minutes later we get there we got another one on get another one on this one pops off too We're like, what the heck is going on and Finally, it's up. I, I look at the, the the first mate, and I said, "Let me see that lure." And that hook was bent. The tip of the hook was bent over. Mm. We pulled out three other lures, and they were all bent over. Wow! I was not a very happy camper. And the the, the, the captain Andy, he was going, "Well, let's go." The reason we're not catching them is because they're not eating it like bait. Let's go catch bait and fish live bait for them. Dude, we caught two tuna, and we trolled for five more hours without a bite. And and here's the thing I look at. We knew what was working. Mm-hmm. They were buying. They were biting lures. They were aggressive as hell, and then we went and changed. That, it's difficult to swallow when you're paying for what do you you know, you know at the time we're paying six seven hundred dollars a day for a charter. Right. You know I was pissed off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but that's my that's my Mazatlan story. There's marlin freaking everywhere. Oh, everywhere. I mean, we've caught marlin a mile and a half offshore. From the marina. I mean, it's it's absolutely amazing fishery. We've caught mahi mahi snapper from the beach. <laughs> we my my most my, I caught um, in uh, the East Cape, just north of Cabo. Uh, I used to go to a place called Rancho Leonero, and I was in my kayak, and you know, I hooked about a thirty-five pound mahi, and wow. they jump really high when you're in the boat. They jump really, really high when you're in your kayak. <laughs> it's like you're looking at this fish is like 12 feet in the air. Mm-hmm. It's just like mm-hmm. nuts in, in doing that. So uh, what do we got here, Jonathan? We got two minutes left, one minute left. 
two. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna pull this up. We're gonna we're gonna. I know we're, we're, we went off in the fishing stories early. Jonathan's like, "What the hell are you doing?" I didn't have no fishing stuff right up, but we'll, we'll get back. We're gonna talk a little bit more business. So again, I want to come back when we come back, Andy. Let, let's talk about some perception. Let's talk some comedy of errors of some people that yeah really thought that their business was worth yeah a lot more than what it was and uh you know kind of go from there but you know we got to get out and uh we're gonna go there so we ready to go to the break ish all right so we're gonna go to break right now we're uh you know we're sitting our tummies are rungling we're ready for tacos and margaritas right after this and uh See, this is why you got to come on the Teach Your Business to Fish show. We have fun and we go for tacos afterwards. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's part. Michael Ray here with Andy Erickson. We'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> Hi, this is Alberto Tudela. The Houston metro area has experienced a substantial increase of wind and hail damage, flooding, and other perils in the last five years. Now more than ever, it is critical and essential to ensure your company, your property, as well as your family have the right insurance coverage. Tudela Insurance Solutions offers a wide variety of insurance for home, auto, property, as well as life insurance. My goal is to find a tailored option that guarantees the right coverage at the right price. Specific to your needs, present and future, so you protect what matters the most. Call me today at 713-714-4475 and allow our team at Tudela Insurance Solutions to make sure you're protected. Accidents never happen when we expect them. Now is the time to ensure you have peace of mind. Hi, I'm Mike Mogell, the CEO of Clean Sweep Office Cleaning. A clean and disinfected space is essential to keeping your customers and your staff healthy, safe, and productive while preventing the spread of COVID-19. Clean Sweep Office Cleaning with more than 20 years experience in janitorial, restaurant, post-construction, and floor maintenance cleaning. We really make it shine. We are focused on quality cleaning and wellness in our customer spaces. Our team is professionally trained to ensure not a spot is missed, and we use products that are safe for your property, and your people. Our services are tailored to your individual needs and include expert floor care, dusting, sweeping, mopping, vacuuming, detailing, glass cleaning, and deep disinfecting. Our experienced team is here to make your office as comfortable and clean as possible. Visit our website at cleansweepofficecleaning.com or call us today at 832-689-7996. Now that's a clean sweep. transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. Hey, this is Michael Rager, your business guide with Teach Your Business to Fish. We got Andy Erickson out there, and uh, those of you guys that are not watching us Facebook Live, man, you're missing the uh, the interactions we're having. Our friend Tina out there with Bait Butler. We're gonna give you we're gonna give you a promo on there. Tina's got. It. Hey, Jonathan, pull up. Can you find out baitbutler.com? Butler, B-U-T-L-E-R. Find it. We'll give Tina since Tina's on there and she's chatting with us. We'll give her a little pub. There and, we go. Uh, and uh, we'll show her what's going on. But Andy, we were talking about the Marlin stuff mm-hmm. and before and, and how I was pissed out at my guide. And you brought it up in the in the thing. People in business will be doing something that's working. And, and then they'll just change. They'll change for no apparent reason. Mm-hmm. How many times have you seen that? Um, almost every single time. And, you know, there's been times where I've found that I've done that once or twice. And you, you really have to just, you know, hold yourself back. It's tweaking. It's, it's, it, 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 it didn't need to change because all we had to do to be successful was one of two things. Right. We could either just file the hooks <laughs> or we could we could have changed the hooks. Exactly. And that, that was it. Why reinvent the wheel? Uh, well, because we're human <laughs> and our ego is just like monstrous and we feel that we need to uh, we need to do things that are 
you know, different to prove it's my idea, my idea works. And that's what that captain, that's what he did. He's like, no, 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 tuna, tuna, we need bait, we need bait. <laughs> so we wasted an hour trolling around trying to catch little tuna this big so right. we can put him on his bait. And then we got him down there, and then we hooked one, and we lost that sucker too. Um, <laughs> so it didn't make us any happier. So, you know, kind of go up there. So one of the things we said we'd talk about here is uh, let's talk about some, hey, there's the bait butler. There it is, Tina, we got you oh, cool. on there. So uh, let, me, let me. So there we go, we put you out there. Awesome, uh, we can use that. So, uh, you know, it's kind of cool stuff. Uh, Tina's watching this on Facebook Live, and we thought we'd give her a shout out. She goes to our uh, uh, executive angler happy hour and, um, you know, stuff like that. You need to connect with us and make sure we're connected on Facebook. We got some Facebook groups we need to introduce you to and uh, get some people that can uh, see what you're doing. So, Definitely. one of the things we were talking about, Andy, was let's talk about some people who were really, really, their perception of their business mm -hmm. was way different than what it was okay well let, let's let's start it out with most of these people are entrepreneurs that started yep. the business from from you know nothing it's they, their baby it's their baby it's their baby their the amount of emotional currency that they have in you know about their business exceeds the actual value mm -hmm. and so one of the biggest things that that we see is people want something They've already in their mind for the last five years. They've never talked to anybody. They've never improved systems. They now say, okay, my business, I want 500000 Or here's a perfect example. We have a retailer that's also a manufacturer who is also a designer. Mm -hmm. they, they converted their business model to retail, and they wanted to sell their business for $4 million. And I said, wow, that's, that's really an exciting number. Let, let's talk about this, and you know, let me do a valuation and see where we are. Well, they had only been operating in this new business model for a year, and they generated less than $200,000. They had 500000 in inventory from their first year. And so now the property was worth you know, a little over $2 million, so in the package deal, it still wasn't going to sell for $2.5 million. Did they, did they own the property? They own the property. They own the property, so it was more of a real estate it was deal. More of, it, would, it would have been a complete real estate deal. So mm -hmm. you know what we helped them do is they just needed to sit back. They, they have a financial pro forma that they know that they need to achieve in the next two to three years, but it was right now is not the right time to do this. We can list your business, but you're not going to sell for what you want. Right, 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 right. That's the kind of business that... You know, we look at it and we take them in and, and, and look at, you know, the sales, the operations, the strategy, and get that stuff all aligned. It, it probably could be a $4 million business. Oh, easily. But easily. They, they're going to have to do, what, $3 million in revenue? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, you know, that, that takes the real estate into it. And that still put, takes the real estate into, into it. it. So it's, you're not really, your retail's hard. Yeah. It's, it's, it's way harder to, um, to sell that. But, you know, I had... Um, my friend Roger DeGregory on a few weeks ago who owns the Fish Gallery in Houston. Mm -hmm. And his big thing is if you're going to do anything retail, you've got to own the real estate. He says, I don't know how people that are going out there right now are making it, no. paying paying these real estate fees. There's, there's I, rental fees. It's ridiculous. I, lo I love Fish Gallery. That's one of my favorite places to go stock the fish tanks. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Roger's, Roger's got some beautiful fish tanks. I just don't make enough money yet to, uh, <laughs> to hire him. I just get to go smoke cigars with him. It's like, dude, come on. <laughs> I know him from, uh, he's a friend of my wife's, and I actually, when I was in financial services, uh, it was really funny, as I, I did the um, the 529 plan for their first kid. Okay. And then when the second kid, <laughs> so the first kid's going to college, thanks to me. The second one, uh, second one yeah, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, she, maybe she's going to go over with that. But it, it's, a, it's a great place, man. It's beautiful. You guys haven't been there. And they now have like five locations across Texas. They've got a couple there. They're looking at right now. Um, one of the ones he's talking about is up in Dallas where he's bought an empty big box store. Okay. And what he's going to do is he's going to put in a fish gallery and then a vet and then a pet supply store. And then they're working on a burger play concept. I think it's called Doghouse. Okay. So it's it's a place where you can come on in the afternoon and bring your dog and have a beer and oh, a that's burger. Awesome. And um, you know it, it's great. You know I you know I love my dog. I love dogs. I just don't want to go eat with them. <laughs> you know it's I'm, I'm just one of those guys and i can do that at home <laughs> yeah exactly if i'm gonna eat with my dog at home and have it look at me you know mm -hmm. yeah i can do that at home i don't want to take him out and have him you know eat my 18 dollar burger right right when he can eat my two dollar burger at home so so what so what are some fun things that are going on uh, with you know 
first choice and what you're growing and how do you see your business growing? I mean, you, you, you're, you're recruiting people, you're bringing people on. Mm-hmm. How do they find you? If, if you want to become a business broker and you want to find Andy, how, how do they find you and how does that work? You know, well, you can go to Houston, Texas, uh, businessesforsale.com or you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Google. You can find us anywhere. I mean, we, we do um, Craigslist ads. I mean, we're, we're everywhere when it comes to finding business brokers because most people don't know that business brokers exist. Mm-hmm. And so it's really an education process for people that want to become a business broker and people that want to use a business broker. Mm-hmm. We really do a lot of education. I know your Craigslist ads are there because I put them like I put mine like right above yours, <laughs> and uh, so like when I'm going looking for coaches, is that pissing you off? Like it's pissing me off. No, no. It, it, you know, the best thing is I, I borrowed an advertisement from one of my fellow franchisees in mm-hmm. the system, and I put the whole advertisement up. Well, I didn't change the phone number, and so I had they le- calling him. The, my leads were calling um, my partner in uh, New York. Nice. And- <laughs> He had to love you. <laughs> he loved me. So, <laughs> well, no, my, my thing is, I get people to call mm-hmm. and we talk. We have our first conversation. Everything's good. And it's usually with me, it's a three part close. So mm-hmm. I want to just, hey, this is what we're doing. The second one is, hey, I'm going to go in detail into what you're doing because to come work with me, there, there's a fee. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if there is or not with you or what it is. So there's a fee because we're going to build them a website. We're going to do all the background stuff for them. And we got that. And they're like, oh my God, I can't wait, can't wait. Da, 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 da having the last thing to close and they never, never hear from them again. Mm-hmm. It's like, there's, it's like, why did you just waste all my time? Why did you go waste my time and tell me to call and put time in my calendar for that next one and then you never call me again? We have similar experiences. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> just not me. No. Good, because uh, I'm really starting to feel really bad about that. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm sitting there, I get done after a day of phone calling and I'll look in the mirror and I'm like, what's wrong with me? Why do people not like me? <laughs> you know, and it's a numbers game when it comes to advertising all these different things. And you really have to find the right person that, that fits, you know, your your style of management. And, you know, can can they work with your, your type of clients? Yeah, yeah. With me, it's a little bit different. I mean, I know you guys work a lot mm-hmm. together. With me, it's me helping them set things up more or less on their own. Okay. I've got some people that want to come in under the Teacher Fish to Fish brand. Mm-hmm. Some have their uh, some they have their own ideas on what they want to do, um, you know, kind of going from there. So when people are, you know, you gave your hey Jonathan, can you throw up um can you throw up Andy's website and stuff so they know where to find him? Thanks. I know he's over there like not paying attention, talking, <laughs> getting ready to eat lunch. Oh, dang. Them engineers, those sound engineers, I don't know. What? Yeah, he's giving me the crap. That's why we need that. Turn that sound around. See, there he is. There's, 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 there he is. Say hi, hey, Jonathan. <laughs> so uh, that's the thing about us. Like we're we're a little bit more less structured than Sherman, and um, I have no shorts. I got I got shorts. Like my shirt's like opening up, and it's like getting me. I see it in there. I, I, see, <laughs> I see it. And I'm like I'm just self conscious. People are seeing my fat. Uh, and there we go. So so what's going on with you guys? You know, what's the goal of First Choice Business Brokers for you? You know, because we always talk about and in mind. Right. You know, you're gonna grow this thing to 20, 25 agents, then turn around and sell it, or what's here? So you know. I am currently operating two businesses okay. and the business brokerage, my, my partner and I started the franchise here in Houston and so he has given me the ability to solely focus on the business brokerage. The goal mm-hmm. is to get it to a certain size which is 10 to 25 agents where I am managing the agents and not doing the day to day buying and selling of businesses mm-hmm. and so that I can go focus on doing some other things that we really want to do. We really want to go after the companies that use franchising as a growth strategy to sell those because those are a little bit bigger fish. I mean, it's kind of mm-hmm. like catching a marlin versus yeah. a wahoo, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, you know, really the long term goal for me is financial stability and also diversification. So mm-hmm. uh, there's some other businesses that I have in my mind that I want to acquire here in the Houston area mm-hmm. and uh, set myself up for a nice retirement. Yeah, that's it's what we're looking to is that's what we got to spend a little bit more time sitting down, you know, outside of drinking uh, and go through some <laughs> of the. You got to see some of the stuff that we're doing. The uh, I think the profit accelerator thing, I think maybe a really good thing for uh, a yeah. lot of your clients, um, you know, really get it out. We, we're teaming up right now with some, uh, we're going to, I think I'm going to hold the thing for digital marketers because mm-hmm. we came out with a new uh, profit acceleration digital marketing strategy. Yeah. And, you know, it's really detailed and stuff like that that goes over my head. And, um, you know, that's why I have experts working for me <laughs> that do that stuff <laughs> and uh, and go from there. What we got now, Jonathan, five minutes left-ish. Six. All right. So let's talk six. 
All right. So within the next year, man, we're going to an efficient to Louisiana. Are you in or out? I'm in. Okay. I just want to make sure right now. <laughs> I want to start putting that out. Hey, Andy's in. So if you want to go to an efficient with Andy and I and four other people, you want to be one of those lucky four people, let us know yes. ASAP because probably here in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to go book that trip because um, you know, going, I'm going to try to book two, actually. Uh, I only want to book one in, in October. Because they're catching, they catch monsters. It's a completely October. different fishery. Too. It's it's close. It's inshore. Mm-hmm. It's you're fishing behind tuna boats. Um, but you know, of course, we're going to do our snapper trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, which Andy's, if you go on the uh, Teach Your Business to Fish page or the Executive Anglers page, you see these knuckleheads holding up these big snappers. <laughs> Andy's Andy's one of them, and uh, you know, kind of going from there. And you know, we we just want to go out there. So, what what kind of things do you want to accomplish in the next year? You know, I think really what I want to accomplish in the next year is to develop a team, but individually develop these agents and business brokers to help them achieve their personal goals. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's really where I, where I like to be. And, you know, it's all about helping people achieve th- their dreams. And mm-hmm. so that helps me achieve my dreams. And what we're, you know, we're, we're going to try to do about three million next year. Okay. Uh, in the office. So that is our focus. And we're, you know, reverse engineering. What are the activities that need to uh, be done to achieve that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the, the thing you know, because we met, what, six, seven, eight months ago, yeah. something like that. We've become good friends since then. We've gone fishing a few times. Mm-hmm. We're, uh, we're starting a new networking group. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we've got a whole bunch of stuff going, you know, and uh, that's what we want you guys to see is this is what it's all about. And, you know, the things we can do to add value to each other. Exactly. You know, that, that's what it's out. You know, I love to have guys like Andy on here. Oh, my God, I finally tapped the table once. And I, I got yelled at so much last week. <laughs> I told me I had to sit on my hands. I almost brought you a foam cushion. Yeah, I know. They're going to be me a foam cushion to sit in here. I got to find something. Jonathan, we got we to gotta, we gotta figure something out there so I can, so I, something I can tap on. I, or I need one of those little widget things I can squeeze. <laughs> You know, you got something in there. Okay, you're going to throw it at me. Uh, you know, the fidget spinner. I'm sure that fidget spinner will make some noise in here, and that just wouldn't be good neither. 